Hi, Steve. Hi there. Hello, dropping in the link for folks to sign in. So, should we begin or should we wait a bit more? Maybe we give it a few more minutes. Okay. So, meanwhile, if you have any additional topics, uh, put them to the agenda. So, I believe that what uh, we agreed on yeah, CD events presentation. Uh, yeah, after that, uh, a review of uh, items we have on the roadmap. Any other major topics we would like to discuss? The only one I had, I just have to get it on the agenda, is if we should be adding um, a, an inclusive statement for each project. Uh, you mean uh, inclusive like, in terms of uh, inclusivity, right? Yeah, inclusivity, um, just like we have the code of conduct, we should maybe have a, oh, a document yes. around that. Speaking of that, uh, yesterday at Evansic we discussed updating uh, to contributor covenant. Uh, I mean, the next version, and maybe it's something we could just put on the agenda because it's totally aligned. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, yeah. Well, we can uh, discuss it when we reach uh, this topic. Uh, but yeah, our code of conduct is dated and it doesn't cover the entire community. And uh, to some extent it's a problem uh, because, uh, 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 for example, community events, etc., they should be covered by another code of conduct. And there are some broken links. So for example, if you go from CDF landscape, you just cannot <laughs> reach the code of conduct at all because there is a broken link just a second i will so, find it uh plus one for updating the code of conduct as well as any links that are necessary to update um what is our process for doing that uh let's discuss it because uh, i had a conversation with uh, tracy yesterday uh, as a follow-up to the cd events meeting so i will just summarize when i really share this topic or if you want, we can just say that okay, we start with that because we discuss it anyway. As you like. Okay, let's uh, just continue. Now. Uh, so for that, uh, yeah, what is our situation that uh, uh, 
if we use a very old version of contributor covenant, uh, well, not very old, but it's version 1.3, I believe, and the modern version is uh, 2.1. And there were drastic changes uh, between version 1.x and 2.x, mostly focused on uh, the scope of um, uh, of conduct. So first of all, uh, now it uh, focuses on communities, not on projects. And this is a difference. And it also covers all community channels and community venues, including conferences, meetups, uh, uh, social media, etc. And it uh, includes a lot of changes uh, among uh, our standards, including, um, for example, uh, inclusivity on the community, examples of an acceptable behavior. It's not what is listed in uh, the contributor covenant officially used by the Continuous Delivery Foundation. And uh, when we were adopting, uh, um, when we were updating Code of Conduct in Jenkins, we decided that we actually take uh, the most recent version at this time, uh, version 2.0, because it was a major concern of, our, of us that uh, uh, the code of conduct of the CDF was basically a bit behind the industry. And now it's even more behind. Uh, so basically, uh, the idea uh, would be to just uh, update the code of conduct. And uh, then uh, there was a question who actually owns that. I brought it up uh, to Tracy uh, yesterday, and she said that uh, it's up to TOC to define what would be the code of conduct for projects and for the CDF in general. So the process would be that if we decide to update it, we need to agree to our own, whether we update the contributor covenant, or whether we write our own code of conduct, or whether we do something else. Uh, then uh, decided on the CDF TOC level and then submit to the governance board basically for final sign off. And that's it. Uh, so if you want, uh, we can just press it with this way. And as far as I can tell, uh, this update to the recent version would address your concerns about uh, uh, inclusivity still. Is it true? You prefer it to be even more explicit? What I was thinking was along the lines on the inclusivity statement, you know, where that other project kind of gives some guidelines on um, how to approach uh, inclusivity. And that's what I was more thinking about was how a, a statement saying this is how the project's going to address inclusivity and, and uh, around that. Uh, lines the, the the new code of conduct I'm all about the 2.1 um, but I'm just wondering if we need to go a little bit deeper on the inclusivity side um, uh, on that side you know for just a, a you know a, a statement that's just a markdown in each project does that make sense I, and I don't know if it's if it's overkill yeah well uh, it makes sense in principle what I brought up uh, a few times on Twitter uh, when talking to people is that I would be happy to see a values in the file uh, in parallel with code of conduct. Uh, because yeah, inclusivity is generally one of uh, uh, areas which could be covered there. Also, there is a question of uh, how the community is governed because it might be democracy, like uh, some project in Jenkins, we officially have meritocracy as a part of our governance model. Uh, so we, such file could potentially include all this key information. Yeah, and even if it was uh, just a link to um, the, inclus the inclusivity project that we're uh, going to be a part of or a part of now. Um, uh, I think inclusive that, naming initiative? Yeah. OK. Even something as simple as that, and that could go into the code of conduct or um, wherever wherever it makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it's fair point. So for inclusive naming initiative, um, 
So obviously, once our application gets accepted, it's stuck somewhere. I haven't checked the status before this meeting. I would need to ask Tracy because uh, she submitted the form. Um, CDF as whole will be listed uh, as a member of inclusive naming initiative. But at the same time, what's versa, we will somehow uh, reference inclusive naming initiative on our website, I believe. Mm, but on the project level, it's a really good question. I, so it would be nice since we have the code of conduct at the project level that um, having it at the inclusive uh, naming initiative or uh, some inclusivity statement at the project level, I think would be beneficial. Okay, so would you be willing to draft it? I mean, uh, how it would look, uh, look like, for example, for Tilius, or maybe Artelius already has it. What was that? You broke up a little bit. I mean, uh, so would you, able to draft it for one of the projects, for example, yes. for Tilius. Uh, so maybe we could uh, take a look at the next meeting and see how it uh, would look like. Yes, I will uh, pull something together, uh, a starting point at least. Uh, yeah, because I think that values in the in principle would be a nice addition. Um, but yeah, it's not a kind of industry standard uh, i've seen on there uh, a couple of projects trying to do something like that usually they put it uh, as a part of uh, uh, code of conduct and uh, here well contributor covenant doesn't cover all the bits of uh, community just by design so yeah for inclusive community i believe that it actually the most of uh, uh, contributor covenant is about uh, building an inclusive community, but some bits uh, might be still missing. Yeah, I don't. Th I think it the the code of conduct is uh, covers like you know eighty percent of it. I think that we need to um, just take it a step farther. Yeah. So, if you would like to take a lead on that. Yeah, I'll, I will um, put me down. It. Yeah, put me down as an action item for doing a uh, a sample one for uh, Ortelius. Okay. okay. So anything else on this topic? Okay, then I guess we have everyone who wanted to join the call. So I would uh, propose to proceed with a formal presentation for CD events. Uh, this presentation is a part of uh, the incubation process, uh, which requires uh, an incubation process too, which requires that any project uh, that wants to join uh, CDF uh, needs to do a presentation at the QC. So I believe that Steve and Andrea could take it over as the uh, main drivers uh, behind uh, the CD events at the moment. They'll probably stop sharing. Do you have any slides? Yeah. Okay. So, so Andrea, do you want me to share it or do you want to? Uh, please go ahead, Steve. Yes. Okay, so we have a pull request out there um, uh, under the CD Foundation uh, TOC repo. Um, so this is the proposal for the CD events. Um, the goal of the events uh, is to basically give a common language uh, for communication between different tools in the CI CD uh, tool chain. Um, and the main starting point that we're going to be focusing on is around uh, a spec that is uh, based on cloud events. 
Uh, now the project won't be exclusively tied to uh, cloud events, uh, and we may have some new technologies come out or better better ways to do it. Uh, but that's where we're um, starting with um, at that level. So one of the things, uh, why is it valuable? Because we are looking to uh, help minimize the friction uh, between uh, integrations uh, of tools and steps in the CI CD uh, pipeline. Uh, the, what we see with the CD events is the ability to um, create a framework uh, and a spec that will allow uh, people to plug and play uh, the different tools. Um, we know that not one company, uh, companies don't have one tool. Um, they have multiple tools that they're using in their CI CD pipeline. Uh, and uh, the reach of the CI CD pipeline is expanding further, um, looking into uh, security scans, uh, telemetry, um, you name it, uh, you know, testing. Uh, that is being uh, broadened uh, every day. So that's where the, the events is trying to make uh, the, uh, the process easier for everybody. Uh, quick background, um, the CD events was, is, is right now is officially a, a SIG under the CDF. Um, there's uh, weekly, I think it's weekly meetings um, uh, that happen around the, the spec itself, uh, vocabulary, uh, doing proof of concept. So there's worker group, working group around uh, the proof of concept. And uh, we have had a, a POC that has been um, uh, put together and delivered and presented at multiple conferences and online talks and it's been well received. Uh, so that's where some of the background history. Um, we are uh, aligning with the, uh, the charter, you know, looking at a way CD events can help with the tool agnostic uh, focus of the CD foundation. Um, the code of conduct. Um, right now, the, the CD events is working under the CDF code of conduct. Um, we just put in yesterday uh, the code of conduct uh, for the 2.1 code of conduct uh, that we were just talking about. I just didn't bother going and updating this, this document because I figure we may have a couple other little changes uh, that are out there. Uh, the sponsors are Andrea and myself, uh, and Oleg's been very uh, uh, involved as well. The project license, if I can get scrolled back up, um, the, is Apache 2. Um, we are still waiting on the logo uh, to come uh, from the Linux Foundation. Uh, more than likely, the logo will be a Creative Commons life license. Uh, we will find out when we get the final version on that. Um, for source control, we actually did, we were able to get the, the CD events uh, GitHub org. Um, the main repo will be the spec repo, uh, kind of following along the lines of the cloud events. Um, they use the spec repo as, as their main repo. And that's where the issues are gonna be uh, tracked is off the spec repo. Um, if you look at the licensing right now, the CD events um, like SDK and the proof of concept was a Golang. So we are uh, have the Golang license dependencies uh, as right now as uh, our main dependency uh, for the project. Um, we do uh, envision other languages that will be uh, implemented, have their own SDK. Uh, you know, like a Python one or a Node.js one um, down the road. But right now, uh, just focusing on uh, Golang. Um, typical release uh, Git flow, uh, following along with like Ortelius and Tecton, uh, nothing new there. Uh, we do have a, a wide variety of people that are involved. Uh, most of these are coming out of the event SIG. Um, so we have a, a good representation uh, across uh, the different uh, end user and 
uh, other CDF uh, projects as well as other uh, external companies. Um, so that's kind of gives us a nice broad view of what's happening. Uh, the governance right now is uh, being uh, done under the governance that was structured under the SIG events project. Um, and we will be looking to um, either bring, figure out how to bring that uh, governance structure from the SIG events um, into uh, this project, uh, or we'll just go ahead and do a bootstrap um, uh, initial governance uh, for starting the project up. And then we'll get into a formal uh, governance model uh, down the road. Um, we are requesting an incubation status. Um, and because everything is so new, uh, we will be, right now the thought is to use GitHub pages as our project website. And we're waiting on the Linux Foundation to get us the events.cd domain. Uh, don't know if that's happened. We do have the Slack uh, channel. Um, that is the uh, SIG events channel. And our email, emailing list right now is off of a Google group, uh, the Twitter handle. Uh, right now, there's uh, no external um, financial contributions at this time um and no existing infrastructure other than like a uh, the github repos um some of the things that are we do need like i said the events.cd uh, domain name and then what we're looking at down the road would be to um, move the website probably off of github pages into a uh, doxy hugo so we can have um where the end user can pick which version of the spec that they want to be able to view. So be able to switch the, the view of the website um, on demand, depending on which spec that they're, which version of the spec that they're looking at. So that's kind of a quick rundown of what we have going on. And um, if you have any specific questions, uh, let Andrea and myself know. Yeah, maybe one question which makes sense to discuss here is expectation for 1.0 version. Because my understanding that even if it's accepted as an incubating project, uh, they will be 1.0 version uh, in short term. So there will be still a lot of grace period so that uh, potential adopters could join, uh, participate in the specification um, and maybe to do some adjustments and the reference implementations. Is it correct? That is correct. So uh, the, like I said, we have the, the POC and we do have a starting vocabulary. Um, we are working through a couple technical issues um, around the events such as um, authentication and uh, history of the events, uh, being able to track through the, the event chain uh, as part of that process. So. Those are a couple of the outstanding technical issues. Um, our, for lack of a better word, go to market is to uh, find and work with uh, a couple use cases, three to four use cases um, as real world examples that we want to focus the events around and build the vocabulary around. Um, and that will give us a concrete path to you know, give us direction which events, uh, which part of the vocabulary we need to focus on uh, and just not go off and start creating events for creating events sake. Um, we wanna be very targeted as part of that process. So um, some of the things along those lines would be bringing in the ambassadors, uh, the CDF uh, ambassadors to help with us and also uh, additional end user uh, members uh, to give us an insight and maybe a couple of use cases that we can uh, work through. But the, the way we kind of envision it is um, more of a, a functional design of the spec based on uh, real world cases. Yeah, I have a related question as Oleg asks, and I know this is a proposal, you will probably work on this thing, but maybe some kind of roadmap Again, because you have been working on this topic under SIG events, and I suppose that work will continue. 
So how do you plan to, you know, work with the roadmap, like one roadmap under CD events and another one on CD events or some converged roadmap? Yeah, that was one of the, um, the interesting things is uh, the, what, what would happen between the, the SIG events and the uh, project itself. Um, and that's where we'll need some, some guidance is whether we continue with the SIG events um, and because that could be water, uh, b much broader than the project itself where the project will be focusing on um, uh, more narrow uh, parts of the spec um so uh, totally open to ideas on, on that front uh which way we should go uh along that those lines and as far as a, a roadmap uh we did not um lay out a roadmap because it uh it wasn't required as part of the project proposal and that may be something that we need to uh add as a checklist item would be a roadmap yeah, it's, so cool. the reason why I am asking is like because you already mentioned a few things that is coming from SIG events like this vocabulary. I, I think they're like part of roadmap anyways. But yeah, again, this is proposal and it's not a requirement under the proposal. So it's general question about how do you envision the, you know, working between SIG events and CD events and perhaps broader CD F community because whatever you may be doing in both of these things like SIG events and the project will have impacts on the ecosystem at large. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And one of the things with the um, the events is they span, um, you know, into everything. So they, uh, if you look at the um, member list, if I can get down there, um, like Dynatrace, which is uh, kept in uh, that's a CNCF project. Harness is over in the CNCF. Um, or Ortelius is a CDF project. Um, same type as Jenkins is a CDF project. So uh, it's uh, spanning across um, multiple uh, organizations and projects in the Linux Foundation as far as members go. So um, yes, it'll be, I think we'll need some guidance from the TOC to determine, you know, what what should be the focus of the SIG events and what should be the focus of the um, the project. And I foresee the project more being around uh, the um, implementing the spec, and the SIG events is more of the the gathering and and understanding the world out there around events. Yes, and I think that kind of uh, matches with the structure that we have today. So we have we do have weekly meeting for the SIG events, and they kind of alternate. So every second week we have one meeting which is focused on the spec, it's more specifically in the vocabulary, and then we have a meeting which is more focused on, um, yeah, describing the use cases, inviting people to present their work around events, so to try to get a better picture of what the community is doing with events today and what are the use cases. Yeah. Thanks. And I have another comment actually, sorry for nitpicking. Uh, if you go down to the end of the proposal, Steve, this uh, communication channels, like lists, email lists, like because I think you are starting new, fresh, I'm wondering if the groups.io is an option to use for you know, the CD events. But yeah, this is a very small thing, just a question. Yeah, so we we chose the um, Google Groups because uh, it was, we felt is the, the easiest to uh, implement and it gave access. You can use the Google Groups, give access to Google Docs uh, mm -hmm. as part of the uh, shared um world um but the that that's made one of the main reasons you know you get uh, you can assign like um, uh, a shared calendar can be um owned by i don't want to say owned but you can you can have a uh 
a shared calendar that the invitee is the Google group. So when somebody comes in and joins the um, joins the group that they'll have access to the calendar invites. So just for uh, ease of implementation, um, we just went with uh, the Google groups. Now there's, um, like I said, the one you mentioned, there's a, there's one from like the CDF uses from uh, the Linux Foundation, um, but that this is just the one that we ended up uh, choosing. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, so for me, um, there are two steps. So firstly, is deciding uh, whether we can accept CD events as incubating project or not. Um, yeah, and uh, after, if you make a decision to accept it to the Continuous Delivery Foundation as an official incubating project, then of course uh, there will be a lot of other items to clean up, including uh, preparing roadmap, preparing marketing communications, going through checklist of what projects need to do after uh, uh, joining CDF, like uh, transferring some resources, getting uh, whatever Zoom accounts, whatever, whatever. Uh, but for me, it's rather a separate stage, which is to be done uh, after the general decision is made. Um, so the question is whether we are able to initiate the vote now or whether we need additional uh, um, inputs before we do that. Uh, do we have uh, enough people from the TOC to have a quorum to do the vote today? I don't think that it would be possible anyway. Uh, I mean, uh, according to the documentation, they expected to do the voting asynchronously. In the in the GitHub pull request or in mailing list. But what we can do is that, for example, if we agree that we proceed with the vote, I initiate it today. And then maybe within one week or so, depending on the activity of TOC members, we can basically declare the decision. So regarding binding votes, it's you, Steve, me, Andrea, Fabrice, uh, Melissa. So we have five of nine, right? Yeah. So so theoretically, we could accept, uh, uh, we could make a decision uh, even on this call, but yeah, I would rather prefer to give a chance to anyone who is not on the call uh, to contribute uh, to the decision or to voice concerns, if any. So my preference would be to just agree to press it with the call, if you agree, um, and then uh, basically set a deadline, something like one week, and uh, if everything uh, is okay, if you get enough uh, votes, then we just press it uh, this that, uh, for more decision. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Okay, so. Yeah, I think in the timeline, then uh, we assume that uh, uh, in one week we have enough votes. Uh, we conclude uh, the decision. So basically, then we will have entire December to prepare. So basically, to close follow ups, etc. And then after Christmas break, we can uh, do announcement when uh, everything is ready. Yeah, I think if we come out uh, beginning in the new year with the the announcements, that would be good timing because everybody will be coming back to work and yeah. uh, so. So it doesn't make sense to announce much before Christmas. Well, maybe some intermediate decision in, in the newsletter somewhere, but uh, with regard to big marketing uh, promotion, it should be rather next year. Agreed. I'm not sure, Jacqueline and Cara, do you have timeline for that on your side? No, only that I've, um, I'm very help, happy to help support the marketing promotion for CD events. And to that end, um, I've started some discussions with um, 
people who could help us with that. But I, I'm our liaise with the um, event seg and the um, project leadership governing board for CD events regarding that and regarding the timeline of when we're ready to do that promotion. So is, does anybody object to Oleg's uh, plan? Yeah. Oh, I'm not uh, screen sharing thing more right. No objections here. It sounds good. Let's do this. Just so you know, for STEM, uh, CICD, their room, CFP will go out soon. So you may need to get your proposal ready for CD events talk. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the um, the things that we are working on is looking to expand the, the POC um, as part of that, uh, being able to do, present it at talks like the CDCon. And also there's like cube cons uh, in Spain uh, that we may be able to get into as well. That, that, that call for papers is coming up I believe it's middle of December. Is it, it's when it's ending. It's so short with regards to deadlines uh, this year, especially for FOSDEM, because everything is something like several months late uh, compared to usual before coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe that uh, CICD rooms, uh, yeah, we know organizers. So it definitely makes sense to apply. Uh, let's see what happens. Then anything else on, on this? So uh, does it, since the roadmap came up, does it make sense to add the, to raise an issue about adding a roadmap to the proposal uh, document? I think it would be useful. Um, so we have a mandatory uh, requirement for having roadmap for graduated projects. Uh, but yet, yeah, to be honest, I think that it should be even more important for incubating projects, especially when we decide uh, whether to accept them in, uh, or not. Because if there is no clear vision for the project, it becomes much more difficult to <laughs> right. even accept it or talk about it. So. I'm plus 100 for having it as a requirement. Okay, do you want to create the issue? Do you want me to create the issue? If you could do that, it would be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll create the issues so we can um, and tie it to the proposal doc. So we basically expect projects to have a roadmap uh, as a part of the project uh, before they apply. Yeah. And with everyone. And this one. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, so what else did we miss? So yeah, there are some, there will be some items in the checklist for December, for example, I think uh, CD events to the continuous delivery landscape, but uh, all of that is already listed in our important checklist. Okay. Anything else to discuss here? Thanks a lot, Stefan and Andrea. So looking forward uh, to having this project 
officially accepted uh, should uh, the voting uh, go fine. And yeah, by the next meeting, we should have a decision about that. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So we can briefly take a look at what we have with our roadmap. Uh, so let's start from here. So public CDF roadmap is my mistake. We agreed that it's basically ready uh, for some incident. Uh, we might need to announce it, but the uh, implementation wise, it's ready. So at CD events, we discussed it all over there. Joining uh, the inclusive naming initiative, basically no updates. We are waiting uh, for enrollment uh, to be processed uh, by the foundation. Uh, so well, inclusive naming initiative is also a part of the Linux foundation and they use LFX tools. And uh, it looks like the application got stuck somewhere then. I have no access to the application. So I will ask Tracy what happens. So what I so CDF once came clean up, how it's going, Cara? Uh, yes, maybe. Um, I don't know if I, I'll, I'll put it in the chat actually. Let me. There's actually really, um, a couple issues that I would love feedback on. <laughs> so since you've asked, I'm going to ask for feedback right now. Um, Okay, mostly there's this issue, right? If you want to, to take over the screen sharing, just go. Okay, up. okay, that's perfect. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, there's this uh, issue which is being worked up. And what I'm doing for the recategorization work on the landscape is I'm really trying to um, take it section by section and sort of work up a prototype, getting feedback as we go with um, different involved groups, including this board, but um, say, for example, the event SIG for that section. And, and what I'm working on right now is this, this, but actually, yeah, yeah, this one on um, um, this area of observability and analysis. And it's really a question right now. The specific point I want feedback on is where we should put messaging um, protocols, but also CD events within this larger box. And I'm just looking for specific feedback so that it's not just me doing it and then people saying, no, that's not what it should look like. Like I'd like feedback as I go or other people can do PRs too. <laughs> um, but just starting with this one section, there's a couple more sections that will be coming up like security and on testing that will also be worked up. Um, but just trying to take it piece by piece. And then I'll put in these spaces, these larger bo blocks that are reconfigured into um, the landscape overall. So um, this one relates to, um, it relates to this PR, which if I go here, you can see it. It's pretty much the screenshot though. Um, this is the prototype. So this is just moving it around. I had to move a section out in order to build this. This is why it's not, this is why it's a WIP and not a real PR. But if you all want to give feedback on the issues or on this prototype PR, please do. There's also a number of issues within the within the repo. Um, and all of these, please jump on and comment. Um, and comment with as much specificity as you can. So a lot of it is like, oh, you should have this category, but I would like more detailed information or input than that. For example, these are the sort of projects that could fit in this category. Here's why I think they group together. Here's where we can move projects around. Um, that is more helpful than just saying, oh, there should be this or there should be that. You know, more, more detailed granular uh, feedback input is more helpful. Uh, Cara, did you see the one that 
I found on the CNCF side about the members, uh, where they took the members and reworked it to a separate tab. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I think that, yeah, that one, this. I think that may help you a little bit. Uh, get well, some more real estate. when I move in the separate sections, we will grow the actual shape of the landscape escape. You can stretch it. So it goes beyond the fold and you can scroll around a larger surface area. And that's really helpful. Um, and I think this, this subject, you brought it up in another meeting on the landscape maybe the landscape working group meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and we discussed it. And at that time, I, I forget who commented. Maybe it was Fatty. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, Fatty. But um, it, was, it was saying that actually at this moment, we'll leave them where they are. And then when we reconfigure the landscape, we'll move a lot of pieces around and grow the size of it. So where the members fall and where the QR code section falls, things like that will definitely change. And it's just a question of what changes where, but that's a little bit farther down the line. Okay, this, I just wanna make sure you saw how uh, the CNCF was able to get some more real estate for you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I've, I look at their landscape a lot and, and they have certainly stretched theirs. Theirs takes up more of a surface area and you have to scroll around it more, which is, the direction we're definitely heading in. Yeah. And then are you going to have another working group meeting? Because I know last time we were talking about having one more. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Because I also need, I um, I think it's a very good channel to engage people and to, to make people like look at it and get feedback because otherwise it can be hard to get the feedback that I'm looking for. So yes, we will be convening another one. Um, I, yeah before in December, basically, but yes. Thank you for your interest. That's really helpful. All the input is, is, is really, really helpful and making it as specific and granular as possible is also helpful. Specificity is good. So, so this is just a call to action to all of you. Please, please um, give feedback on any of these issues on the prototype PR, especially, cause I'd love to have a working sketch on that, that we have some agreement on, and then move on to different sections, like the testing section and the security section, things like that. That is it for landscape. Thank you. Thanks for working on it. I know it's a, it can be, uh, make you think really hard sometimes on this. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it, it is like, well, in terms of grouping, how fine should the grouping be? Should we just little things like, should we separate logging metrics? Should we put them together? And then also like projects really do span different areas. And so how, how to put them, but yeah, thank you. Thank you too. So the next one and the last one we have in progress officially is new project onboarding. So this one is definitely not ready to be closed. Uh, we have a bunch of open tickets, plus we discussed at least two to be created today. Um, it's like at some point we will just need to sit together, maybe at some activity meeting and uh, get it over the line, such as the text, so that we merge everything. Yeah. So I think uh, this one is not ready. Uh, we have a kind of draft checklist uh, while we will be going uh, through CD events. I believe that we will discover a lot of such additional improvements we could make. So if you see anything, just submit a ticket or a pull request so that we can integrate it. Okay. Any other items we are missing in terms of our roadmap, in terms of needed priorities? So there are some topics which are rather near term, for example, uh, technical security audit. I'm not sure what is going to happen in December. The security audit is scheduled for some time next year, I believe in the February, March uh, time. So this is based on the availability of the trace of bid third party, which is um, yeah, going to perform the audit. I don't think there's been any change on that recently. 
Okay. So I'm not sure why I thought it would be December, but yeah. So yeah. Okay. And for all other issues, I believe no updates. So for CBCon, um, Jacqueline announced uh, the program committee. So now we can slowly start preparing uh, to CDFTOC to understand uh, what exactly is needed uh, from us as a group. Maybe some updates there. Um, but yeah, I don't think that uh, there is something uh, with deadline in the coming two months. So we can just press it with the stories we have in the flight, get the CD events over the line, get the boarding guidelines, and then see what else we need to do. Uh, if everyone agrees, I'll probably add a code of conduct update to near term. Uh, but yeah, we will start a synchronous discussion about that. So it's not ready for being deeply discussed today. Okay. So, so I'll create the ticket. Um, anything else we need to discuss today? Um, I, I added one item and trying to find out who can help me with that. Um, so on Tekton side, um, our infrastructure like releases, CI and support, they run on GCP, so on Google Cloud. Um, and the projects were originally created like project for Googlers because the project was initially created in Google, then it was donated to the CDF. And so new billing accounts were created to move some of the projects over to the new billing account, which should be then built to the CDF. Uh, but at the moment, the status is that we have a couple of billing accounts. Uh, I'm not sure which one of them is built to the CDF. And what we are planning to do in the December time where we want to recreate the projects from scratch so that they are created like regular projects and then um, like people from the technical community can have like full admin access and then we can, we would like to set them to the right billing account <laughs> um, that is visible. Um, so the one that the CDF has full access to. Um, so I'm trying to find out what the, the right billing account is and who can have this information on CDF side. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone on this call knows. Um, I think you'll probably want to start with Tracy, um, Miranda, and then also Michelle, who's our new PM. I think they'll probably be, be, be able to help you with all that. All right. I will ask them. Thanks, Jackie. Okay. So if uh, that's it. Um, Thank you so the next meeting is as usual in two weeks. So it will be December 7th, December 8th. Are uh, you then just planned for these days? So. All right. Okay. Then uh, thanks everyone. Uh, Thank so you. I, I will submit a uh, voting uh, for CD events um, tonight. So maybe in a couple of hours. And yep. Yeah. Everyone is welcome uh, to participate. Cool. Thank you, Oleg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.